Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair K70 Pro Mini Wireless. This is a 60% mechanical gaming keyboard from Corsair, and obviously a wireless one, hence the name. And this is an interesting board, which in this video I'm going to be taking apart in various different ways, swapping out the keycaps for things like Corsair's Double Shot PBT keycap set that you can see here, and also showing off a number of interesting highlights to it that I'll get to in a minute, as well as doing a sound test naturally at the end. I also want to talk to you about the various different things of interest, not least of which is the RGB lighting bar that runs around the outside, but also the hot swappable switches. That's right, this is the first time Corsair has done a hot swappable keyboard, meaning you can swap out with Cherry MX style switches and change the feel of the keyboard not only the look of it, but also the feedback from it and other things. Now this comes with a choice of two switches as standard, red linear switches or Cherry MX Speed Silver, which have the 1.2 millimeter actuation. So they're the faster ones. I'll leave all the specs in the description, but this is the red linear setup. So this has Cherry MX RGB red linear switches on it. And I'll leave a sound test at the end, but fairly standard switches. But now you have the option of changing out those switches and more on that in a minute. But as you'll see, it also has some of the same highlights to the Corsair K65 RGB Mini, which I unboxed and reviewed a while back. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now, at the time I was taken by the K65 RGB Mini because of its very much RGB design. You can see it here, a staggeringly good looking keyboard, even out of the box as standard. You can see that it has a white back plate, so it really let that RGB shine through. And I was struck by how nice looking that keyboard was. Unfortunately, the K70 Pro Mini Wireless doesn't seem to offer the same level of RGB lighting. It doesn't have that same back plate. What it does have, as you can see, is PBT double shot keycaps. So you have got that durable design there. You also have some nice illumination around the edges. So you can see there's basically a edge lit area all the way around, which gives you some RGB lighting there. You obviously have some bleed from underneath the keycaps as well. On the rear, you'll notice there's a power switch, USB-C charging plug, and a port for your USB dongle when you're not using it. It uses 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, but it also has three different Bluetooth connectivity options. So you can connect up to three different Bluetooth devices and use it in that way. So what you're seeing already is a number of interesting features about this keyboard. Beyond that, it also has 8,000 hertz polling rate, a 4,000 hertz key scanning capability. It will also work with both console and PC. And so you have plenty of different connection options here and all sorts of other things. Up to 50 onboard profiles and 20 layers of RGB lighting effects. In terms of what you get out of the battery as well, it's able to manage up to 32 hours with the RGB turned on and up to 200 with it turned off. Included in the box, you see they get USB-C cable. You also have a replaceable Corsair logo keycap and an accented spacebar, which I think looks really nice and it's worth swapping out, out if nothing else. You also see that you have not only the keycap puller, but also the key switch puller as well. Although there are obviously no extra key switches included as standard. A little dock for the 2.4 gigahertz to keep that safe when you're not using it. And then obviously you can connect it up to your PC and that'll give you the low latency, fast response that you want with the 2.4 gigahertz slipstream wireless connectivity. So I've been using this keyboard for a little while and I'm happy to report that I was actually quite pleased with it. Although it uses Cherry MX switches which aren't the fanciest by any means, I thought it was a little bit nicer than the K65. I've already said that it's not as nice in terms of the RGB lighting. And you can see what I mean here with these sort of close-up shots. The RGB just doesn't shine through as well. There are a number of onboard controls though. Being a 60% keyboard, it means that some of the functions are buried in the other key. So you see you press and hold the function key and you can change the onboard lighting, for example. You can cycle through different modes by pressing C. You can also adjust the direction and brightness by pressing X and V and B, and you can tweak other things. There are a lot of other custom options in there as well. You can change around various different settings on the keyboard and it gives you the flexibility to do a lot of things. 
sometimes it's a bit of a faff, I'll be honest. Certain things are a bit of a pain to do. For example, something as simple as pressing delete means you have to press the function key and the backspace button. But that's the trade off with a 60% keyboard. It becomes a little bit more finicky. However, as I said already, PBT double shot keycaps is standard. On this one, there are different layouts. It's worth bearing that in mind. Check the one you're purchasing because some of them have polycarbonate keycap sets instead. But this, as you can see, is the thicker PBT, so it should last longer. And that's part of the reason why the RGB doesn't shine through quite so well. This keyboard is compatible with PC, Mac, Mobile, Xbox, and PlayStation. And there's actually a dedicated PlayStation mode. I'll leave more detail in that in the description. But I've obviously been using it on PC because that is where I get my game on. Now this keyboard naturally works with Corsair's IQ software where you can customize a lot of the settings. I've said already it has 50 onboard profiles that are possible, but there's also a lot of hardware level things. So you can do onboard macro recording. Although there's no dedicated keys, you can actually set up and record macros on the fly. You also have loads of different hardware level controls and simple things of interest, which I'll show a bit later on. It includes really detailed things like the ability to control mouse movement from the function level of the key presses. You can also press the function key and the enter key and get a idea of how much battery you have left, simple by RGB lighting flashing on the enter key, which is pretty interesting. So a little thought has gone into a lot of different features on this keyboard and i really like that there's a lot of little hidden things on midi obvious obviously it has a really good spec to it in terms of the 8000 hertz polling rate to deliver really good fast actuation and fast signal strength to your pc to ensure that you're getting a really good response out of it and it certainly has been very responsive and also you have a lot of customization potential with the switches which i'll cover in a bit more depth in a minute but there's a lot of flexibility here as well. And as you can see, a very premium keyboard and actually not the most expensive I've seen for what's on offer here. So there's a lot of different things. Now, removable USB-C cable naturally, and they say that you can charge it fully in about three to five hours, depending on the power source. So not fast charging necessarily, but what I've found is you don't really need to plug it in that much. And obviously, also, it's designed to last depending on the sort of levels and brightness of the RGB lighting that you're using. So if you have a lot of RGB, then it won't last as long. But frankly, the RGB is not that impressive as standard anyway. Now, if you put the K70 alongside the K65, you'll see there's not that much outwardly different about the two. The positioning of things like the USB-C port is slightly different. Obviously, the backplate that I've already shown you with the white RGB backlighting effect sort of bouncing off there, that's obviously different. The K65 is a wired keyboard, naturally, so it's not as good. And I think it sits a bit higher. You can see the casing is a little bit thicker. And I think that's probably why I found the K70 to be more pleasant. It's not as nice looking perhaps out of the box, but it's a more comfortable typing experience because I feel like the body sits a little bit lower and that's the setup there. Now, if you're wondering about my key layout, this is a UK version. That's why I've got a small left shift and a large enter key. Just bear that in mind when you see me change out the keycaps in a while you may well have a different setup. Now, perhaps the most interesting thing about this is the hot swappable key switches. So as standard, you have the Cherry MX switches, but you can swap them out if you want to. So there's the option to upgrade the keyboard. This is obviously an extra expense. There are no switches included in the box, but you do have the little puller to pull them out. And you'll see that basically you use this tool to grab them on the top and bottom and then give them a little bit of a yank. This is pretty exciting because you don't see many main brand keyboards delivering hot swappable switches. I've seen NZXT do this recently, so it's pretty cool to see Corsair doing it now. Maybe we'll see some of the other companies doing it in the near future. So you can see that they're relatively easy to remove. No soldering required. This gives you an upgrade option. One downside that I found almost immediately was that this is only a three pin setup. So with Cherry MX style switches, you can usually get three or five pin switch setups. 
And here's a close look at the Cherry MX RGB Reds. And you can see basically it has a large stem in the middle and it has two metal prongs that give you the connection that then obviously actuate and send the signal to the PC. What you will find is that other switches sometimes have five pins. So you can see Novel Keys Creams here, and these are lubed. So I wanted to use these because they'll be nice and quiet and have a better sound to them and a better feel. But unfortunately, they're five pin, so they wouldn't actually be possible to put in here. So I couldn't actually do what I wanted to do. So that's a real shame, but it's something to bear in mind, I think. Keep in mind, if you are thinking about upgrading your switches, you need to make sure that they're three pin, not five, because the fives won't fit unless you cut off some of the legs, you just cut off a couple of the pins, which would be horrific and would take ages and I wouldn't recommend it. But you can see that's something to keep in mind. Now I've recently done a Royal Kludge keyboard and that was a five pin. So you could see me taking a Gateron yellow switch out of that one. And you'll notice that that has two extra holes versus the Corsair one on either side of the middle stem. So that gives you more options in terms of what switches you can put in. However, there are still other options out there. So you can see that the Gateron yellows that I've actually just pulled out do actually only have three pins in them. So that it's possible to use those as an alternative. They are linear switches. And my original plan was to lube up some switches and to make sure that they sound better and they have a smoother action to them. So the Gatron yellows are actually a similar spec to the Cherry MXs, but they have a linear setup which is a bit smoother. And if you take them apart as I'm doing here and then just put in some lube, which I've done previously, and I'll link to a video in the description where I did lube up some key switches for better results then you get a much better overall feel to them and I will leave a link to better guides from other more intelligent people than myself on this but you can basically lube up linear switches and make them really sound good and Cherry MX switches are kind of rattly and a bit noisy now one of the things about the K70 is I found the space bar to be particularly loud on this one and it's certainly not the quietest or the nicest keyboard I've heard and I'll leave a sound test at the end but what I have found is it's not the most obnoxious either it's certainly not mega rattly or completely horrible to type on. It's been a pretty decent experience, but you can, if you do find it not very present, you can obviously swap out the switches and upgrade things yourself. Naturally, you'd have to be a bit more aggressive taking it apart if you wanted to get to the stabilizers or perhaps to do anything else a bit more extreme. But for your average user, the ability to swap out some of the switches, even just replacing ones that come defective over time is obviously a brilliant way to keep the keyboard running and running well, or just to simply swap out some of them. So you might want to swap out WASD, for example. Now, from various different angles, you can see the extra layer of functions. You'll see there are loads of extra functions programmed into this keyboard in a variety of different places. You look at the QWERTY WASD key setup here, for example, and you'll see what I was talking about earlier on. So you actually have the ability to control mouse movement and button clicks on your keyboard with a function press and then this area of the keyboard, you can basically replace your mouse, which is fairly curious. You'll see T, Y, and G allow you to switch between the three different Bluetooth profiles. So you can connect up three different Bluetooth devices and then switch into those modes from here. You also have media playback buttons, directional arrows, and other things all set up already for you, which is pretty interesting. The RGB lighting, I think, looks nicer from the sides than it does from the top as standard. You can see that lighting bar there allowing for some nice RGB lighting. However, it is layerable and I may show off some of this at the end and tease what you can do. But what I want to demonstrate quickly is how much difference different keycaps make. So you can see this is the blue keycaps from Corsair, PBT double shot ones, and then I've thrown in some pink around the middle as well, just out of curiosity to see how it looks. And I'm switching between the various modes. Again, because these are double shot, they don't let through quite as much of the RGB lighting, but if you throw on something like Steel Series Prism keycaps, these are pudding keycaps, they really let it shine. And I think this actually really it changes the look and feel of the keyboard. It looks a lot nicer with this setup, it really lets the RGB come through in the various different effects. And it's a shame that Corsair didn't include keycaps like this as standard because it would have made a big difference. 
but it does show you the level of customization potential you have. If you have a standard bottom row layout, you can obviously swap out the keycaps in a variety of different ways and change through loads of different options to personalize the look and feel of your keyboard at some expense. I'll leave links to all the different keycap sets in the description so you can check them out for yourself. And obviously all the specs I'll leave down there as well. So pretty interesting setup so far. And now I'm gonna let you hear the key sounds. Smash subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching.